Mr. Jay Kumar and distinguished guest, and we have a very distinguished professor from Professor uh, Delhi University who gave a brilliant talk yesterday, Bharat Gupta, on um, history and sociology and so on. And uh, so uh, I am uh, grateful to you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I have not been well for some time. So I was worried whether I'll be able to come and speak, but uh, thanks uh, that I am able to stand before you. And as I was told, I have to speak for a longer time. I prepared the speech for a longer time, but now as I have to cut it down, uh, um, I may cut it down also. And uh, tell me when you want me to stop, I'll stop at that moment itself. Hmm? Uh, I wish you all the best uh, for this uh, new venture you have taken up under the direction of Vijay Swamiji, uh, who is the embodiment of knowledge. And um, I have had the privilege of meeting many, many great men of this uh, country, our country, and other parts of the world also. And um, we have heard of uh, many Maharishis, you know, Yajnavalkya, Vasishta, and so many great men. They are all uh, in history. But if you want to see someone who is a real Maharishi living with us, carrying the Atma Vidya, today it is uh, his uh, Pujya Swamiji who is uh, Swami Dayananda Saraswati. Absolutely perfect scholar of Indian knowledge system. And I had the privilege, and uh, if I am here, it is because of uh, him. He wanted me to come here and uh, talk to you. Now, friends, uh, I don't know where to start and where to stop. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, am, I agree with. Uh, some of uh, the statements they have made that there are a lot of distortions about our life, about our culture, not only among the people outside our country, but amongst ourselves. We don't have adequate knowledge or basic knowledge of our own culture. I'll tell you only one small instance. I have to appear in London High Court on a very important case. All of a sudden, the High Court judge asked me, Dr. Nagaswamy, what do you mean by a Hindu temple? Now the whole, whole case was centered around the definition. And um, I am sure you, many of you might have thought of it. What is it? What is a Hindu temple? It has to be acceptable to reason, which we call legal. Mm -hmm. Legally accepted definition of a temple is required. And uh, I am sure uh, we have a very vague idea of what is a Hindu temple. <laughs> is, it, is it the structure? Most of us, we will feel that it is a structure. You know, when you see a long, at a long distance, huge towers, we, we think it is the Hindu temple. So, um, I am going to speak about what is a Hindu temple. <laughs> now, so what is the form? What is its meaning? That's what I am also thankful that you want to start the history, history project. History is based on time consciousness, main point, though we talk of uh, beyond time, kala, titaha, but as historians we confine ourselves to time. And so, hope, uh, my talk will be within the framework of time and understanding what this great institution. Now, I'll start. Huh? 
I dedicate this to Mahaswami, who was a very embodiment of uh, Godhood and divinity in this uh, world. And uh, he was the person who introduced me and who blessed me with the knowledge of uh, temples. <coughs> and Pujya Swami. I'm sorry, I was standing between you and the light. Uh, you are the light. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, is it okay? I am not carrying it up. If any of you are carrying it up, please do come here. No problem. So, put you Swamiji and uh, next one, please. Now, I have a small uh, website for the past 10 years where I have put in a lot of uh, articles in Tamil, Sanskrit, English. All these are all for higher academic research, so which you can use. Um, it is available. A lot of illustrations. <laughs> and I have also put, we have seven thousand Tamil verses called Tevaram, sung by Saiva Saints, 7,000 or even more. Only Tevaram by three saints. And these are available in Tamil and they are sung between 6th century or 7th century and 9th century. So more than 1,000 years old. And I have put them in, uh, in my website in Tamil in English with a diacritical mark and nearly 10 different scripts of India. Anybody from uh, um, Bengal or Gujarat or uh, Nagari or Varisa or uh, Malayalam, all, in all this script you can just read it by one touch. You know the modern technology has developed in one touch. You can immediately have it converted. And those of you, you may not be able to understand the language, but still, if you want to verify it, you can go back to the English version with the diacritical mark so that you can compare it, uh, any song, and try to learn some of them. Some of them are immortal poems, outstanding poems. Maybe I'll show you so one or two of those. So here you have the only Tamil, uh, this um, Malayalam, you have it in uh, Telugu, you have it in uh, Canada. All 7,000 verses. Okay, next. Now, this I want to show you because I read yesterday a message from the European Parliament sending a message to Indian government that a lot of uh, things are happening for the Dalits and uh, they should take some responsibility to put them and so on. It's sad. But we are doing good things also, which are not brought to the notice of the world. The bad things that are being done or uh, brought to the world, uh, by, to the European Council and other places, by my Christian friends there. But look at this. Every day, this uh, Mariaman is taken to the Dalit village nearly five or six villages where 300 to 400 Dalit people come. They themselves offer puja like this. See this? Here she is a Dalit woman. Daily it is going on. Puja Swamiji has initiated one in uh, Karnyakumari district. So they take this. And large number of people, Dalits, they come and worship. Look at that. Look at that. That's a Dalit boy worshipping it. So, I think you must bring to the notice of this Western world what is being done there for the Dalit. That's one of the messages I think we have to carry. <laughs> Next one. Now, all, all of Indian concept, all of Indian philosophy, all of Indian religion are based on Jyoti, Param Jyoti. Unfortunately, I have no time to <coughs> say all that. 
next one. The hills. The hills. Next. The river. These are God. We worship them as God, the very manifestation of God. The pond. Next. Even a thatched hut where a small deity was placed during the festival occasion and removed. Lying fallen, when you go there, they will say this is a temple. So that is the approach. The approach to our <coughs> concept of temple. Next. So this is brought under a science called Vastu. Vastu means existence, habitation <coughs> area, or ground, architecture, vehicles like chariots, furniture, all these are all Vastu. And our Shastras, what we call scientific texts, they deal with this. Next. Then we have architects. But friends, I have to tell you that in ancient system, the Acharya, the most knowledgeable person, is the most important person to guide the architects to build what they have to build and why they have to build, why they have to put the image here, why they have to put the image there. It is Acharya. Next, behind him is the patron, and then comes the architect. Architect knows this uh, structure, measurement, material, how it has to be built and so on. But these are all based not simply just putting one stone over the other, but these are tremendous philosophy behind. And this philosophy is translated into visual form in architecture. So do not make the Stapati, who is a contractor, to guide the whole thing. <laughs> you take great temples. Now they call you, Stapati, what to do? Sir, this you do it this way. But his mind is not in architecture. His mind is in contract. So, such, such architects have no place according to Shastra, one who is Lobha, Moha, architect, Stapatis, are not to be entertained. So he will definitely say, sir, this building was built about 20 years back, now it requires repair. Do you repair? Why? We have a Shastra. And that Shastra says, what you have to require, why, and when. Nobody asks this question, and so it is necessary that we know what is Shastra, what is the uh, beauty of it. Here are some great men. The architecture is given its maximum effect as a monumental sculpture. Stedler Kramlitz is a great personality. She has written two volumes, the Hindu temple. Even today, it is the most authoritative place. Now she says, carvings and paintings, it is a sculpture. She says, the figure of Indian sculpture and painting were given the bodies and movements. Dance of dancers. Because if you don't know Indian dance, you cannot appreciate Indian, Indian architecture. You cannot appreciate the gods. Absolutely not. So when we started, in, and I started the Nantanjali festival at Chidambaram, they used to come and ask me, what is there? Why are you bringing dance to the temple? If you do not know Indian dance, you do not know what is Lord. Dance, lot of dance, but rather. 
and the hands, hand gets his bodily movement steps. That is the creative aspect. And so you can't be dry philosophers. The philosophy is there behind, but that is brought to the vision. Next one. Now here is another great Maharishi Aravindo, what he has to say. Every line, arrangement of mass, color, shape, posture, every physical suggestion, however many crowded, opulent they may be, is first and last a suggestion, a symbol, just a suggestion. And dance is a suggestive art. Next one. Now go on next. Now last one. The Indian sculptor is concerned with embodying spiritual experiences. If your mind is not tuned toward that spiritual experience, these massive structures, monuments, monumental structures have no meaning for it. And that's what he says. Next. Now that's why we say, we do avahana, invoke. You bring it down, bring down the divine to this physical form. This physical form is only a symbol. The image is only a symbol. It is only a suggestive form. And then you in invoke, and place this philosophy over this image, and when this philosophy and the images are concerned, or um, connected, it becomes murti. It becomes fit for worship. Otherwise, the stone sculpture is pashana, mere, mere stone. It has nothing to do with the divinity. So, the Acharyas will say, the Pujagas will say, you connect this mantra, which is mental imagery which was there before this image was created, is associated with the physical image, which is called Bimba Murti. You, you plant a Bimba Murti, you associate the mental philosophical imagery on that, that becomes divinity. So, we have Bimba Murti and Mantra Murti. When you go to the temple inside, you see the image, that stone image is not God. That God is, that image is to suggest to you the Godhood. But it is the philosophy, the mental image. That is why most of us when we go, when they do the puja, we don't even see the image, we close our eyes and see. <laughs> But this is a combination. So that is called Stula Murti or Stula Bimba. <coughs> this one is called Sukshma Bimba. Next. Every region has developed its own ideas. Every region of India and Southeast Asia, they have developed their creative image and a custom of bringing the divinity into our presence. Now, we have a form of a linga. My friend told you that we have a lot of distortion. We have linga worship in India from very early time. And half an hour or one hour, some scholar will go from here, from America, to a temple, he says, yes. Oh, then he, she will write a book or he will write a big book interpreting this great philosophy and the linga is interpreted in so bad manners here. Do you know that we have crores of lingas in India and out of crores of linga one or two may represent what these people say, this half an hour scholar. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, in Kurukshetra, 
there was a Shiva Linga and by the side there was another Linga for Parvati. Parvati was worshipped in Linga. There is another Linga for Saraswati. Saraswati is worshipped in Linga. Vishnu is worshipped in Linga. And Brahma is worshipped. Why so much? Our own ancestors, great men, when they die, we put a Linga there and invoke him there and worship. So Linga is not what these often our scholar says. And everybody says from, I have to be here in America and write, then only they will refer to me. You see? So, but you go and see. In the Linga itself, you have, you have three parts, Brahma Bhaga, Vishnu Bhaga, and Rudra Bhaga. I don't do worship of a Linga without worshiping Brahma or Vishnu or Shiva. Similarly, in Vaishnava temple, in ancient Vaishnava temple, there is no worship of Vishnu without Shiva. Next one. Now, how do you conceive? The whole cosmos, there is no direction. It is without direction. The Akasha has absolutely no direction. But we create a direction. And this the creation is by putting one dot in the center. You put one dot, you create 360 degrees. And this is based on you have a grid <coughs> like this. This is drawn on the ground before our temples are erected. We are bringing the whole cosmos down to the earth. And based on this diagram, we build the temple. This is 8 into 8, 64 squares. Very highly calculated grid. It's called Vastu Pada Vinyasa. Next. See, the central part is the Garbhagraha. The outer one has all the directions, invocation, worship. And in between, the outer squares and in the inner squares, you have space where we locate the 12 months as 12 Adityas. So you have the main deity inside, surrounded by the 12 months, Samvatsaras, and then the Nakshatras and Grihataras are all distributed in the square. When you go inside the temple, these are all there. And the Pujaga performs Pujaga. Very few of us we realize that we are in the supreme cosmic power which has been brought down for our sake. Next one. Mm -hmm. Now you double it, you get a rectangle where you have the enclosure, create enclosure. And all other deities. That is a very fine concept. The Westerners don't understand that concept. We consider any power <coughs> is divine. If it is wind, if it is water, or your own power to move it, all powers are deified. Your walk is deified as Saraswati. So, this deification <coughs> of each and every power is distributed in this diagram, in sculpture. Next one. See? This huge temple. Can you put out this one? This particular one. This, this tall temple in the center is exactly in the center of a square. And it is double with uh, with, with an enclosure. And this Jayakumar, where is Mr. Jayakumar? Yes, yes. 
he comes from a place, I am proud of him. <laughs> he comes from a place, the enclosure of this one at the Tanjur temple was built by the commander in chief of the emperor who came from his village. <laughs> so now we know where he comes from, where his qualities come from. He, was, he, he, he should be proud. Because when I asked him, Am Aman Kudi, he wrote me Aman Kudi. The original name is Aman Kudi. Aman Kudi on a Kerala on Taka Chaturvedi Mangalat Krishna and Ramanana Brahma, Mumudi Chola Brahma, the Ryan, he built this. Raja Raja, as a commander. Don't think he was a Brahmin. Brahma, the Raya was a Brahmin. The most outstanding commander in chief of that greatest emperor of Tamil Nadu was a Brahmin commander. Not only that, you can't go like that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that he had the name Raman Krishna. His son Krishna Raman was the commander in charge of another great Chola emperor, Rajendra, who conquered right up to uh, Indonesia. Yes. Sri Vijaya. And that much he knows. <laughs> but let me tell you, sir, Kulotunga chief commander, the other great Chola commander, was also from the same village and he was also a Brahmin commander. So there is one place where the Brahmin commanders were there. There's no difference between a Brahmin commander or a Vedala commander <coughs> or a, this commander. Anybody who had Drona was after the Brahma. So let us not minimize the history of India. This is a history of a great country. So, but you have to know more about it. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> That's why we are doing the history project. Thank you, sir. <laughs> There are sculptures brought from another place. I went twice to that place, completely nothing. I felt so sad. Even two Brahmin families, they have migrated. And there is only one Gurkul there. And uh, nothing in front of that temple. If I were you, younger, unfortunately I'm too old now. I, if I were you, I would have made all the Brahmins to go to that village every year and pay respect to these great commander-in-chiefs who brought credit to the Chola Empire in 10th, 11th century AD. So, our history needs to be known. And this enclosure was built by him under the orders of Raja Raja. This enclosure was ruled and every alternate pillar, it carries his name, Amangudi. Now see, in the Kumbhavishaga, poor Vadyar will come from there. He will draw something and we will all be busy here and he will be doing something. What is he doing? This drawing of grid, this drawing of grid, which consists of so many powers, this is being invoked during annual festival, great Kumbhakshaka, and in every festival called Vastu Puja. For each square, he invokes the mantra and brings into existence. Next one. Apaha, Apaha is what? Apa is the abode of all divinity. Purity. Apova idagum sarvam. There's a Vedic passage. Everything is our. So you put it in the kalasa there and in front of it you have next one. Here we have uh, Homa. Next. The Kumpa Abhisheka. There are so many types of altars, Vedic altars. As many types of main deities you have had. Altars. Triangular altar, heart shape, and then there is a big uh, 
pedestal feet on which Kalasa is in place. <coughs> Next one. See? They recite and invoke the presence of that God in the fire. Now this has a circular form. This circular form is a Vedic altar, <coughs> Ratha Chakra Chithi. And in that, when they do the performance, this gives shape to the Nataraja temple form. So when Nataraja is to be invoked, they will worship it in this Kumbha Abhishaya period. Next. You see, the top sikara is circular, that is derived from the Vedic altar. Next. This is another one, lotus shaped. Next. This is semi circular, apsida. Mm -hmm. These are all Vedic altars. We were struggling with the stapati, the great stapatis we appoint. The modern Thapitis know nothing about all these altars, Vedic altars. So he could not draw this. If he draws, it goes this side, or if he go, if he draws it, it goes that side. For two hours he was struggling. And then one Gurukal came. He says, what are you doing? <laughs> Sir, I am not getting it perfectly balanced. What did you do? Sir, I have drawn the line and taking the measurement. <coughs> Don't do that, you take it from the outside and come down, you'll come. He just gave one advice, immediately what all he was struggling for, it was set right. So this was the mathematical calculation that was known to the poor Acharyas who could draw these uh, altars, <coughs> Vedic altars. It was the Vedic Rishis who found this. Next one. <coughs> now you see a temple, carved temple exactly like that, carved. It's called Gajaprishta. Shatko. It's for Shanmuka. They do the worship. Shanmuka. Next. <coughs> Nobody could give me water. What? Niyokar, Ingo, I know Niyokar. You see this lovely rocket cave of 8th century has got a octagonal sikara derived from that uh, thing. <coughs> so nature has inspired you to invoke divinity. The rising sun, this is the basic absolutely important mantra and we have a prayer and this prayer was given by a rishi nearly 5000 years ago or 4000 years ago Viswamitra and that is being recited till date by thousands of Hindus you forget about uh, crores of Hindus thousands of Hindus even now they pray that what is that prayer? Tat Savitur Vare Enyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodajat Stimulate my intellect. Give me critical intellect. Not give me a beautiful wife, beautiful driving car or wealth or money or uh, Give me critical intellect. This was the call of the Rishi 4000 years ago, which has come down to us. There is no prayer in the world in any other religion which has come down and which speaks of critical knowledge. That is what we have. Next. 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 I am going to take you to... Sir, I may have to stop. Yes. Huh? 
Or, no, no, if you want, I will go on. Otherwise, I will stop. About, about 10 minutes and then question and answer. Yes. Yeah. About 10 minutes, then More. we can have a question and answer. No, no, please go. Uh, no, Jay Kumar won't say that. He, he, he will be very happy if you go on top. No problem. <laughs> anyway, it's, this is a, there is a old prayer. This is a prayer called Sri Rudram. They all do it. When we want them to know what is this Sri Rudram, we are ready to perform Atirudra Mahayagna and Atirudra and so many Rudras, not knowing even a single word of it. What is this Rudra? Rudra is addressed to sun. Next. It is explicitly stated in Vedic poem. I'll show you. The most important poem of the Veda, repeatedly used in all the temple rituals, is Rudra. Asauya Tamraha Aruna Uta Babrusu Mangalaha. Is that the Rudra? Asauya Tamraha, as he rises up, he is like a copper. What happens? Aruna, it turns into Aruna. Next. Uta Babruhu, yellow. Sumangalaha, auspicious. Next. What do you say? Namaste Rudra Manyava Utota Ishave Namaha. He carries the bow and his rays or the arrows. He Rudra, He Surya, you carry this bow and arrow. Namaste. Namaste Rudra Manyava Utota Ishave Namaha. Namaste Atu. Dhanvane Bahubhya Mutate Namaha. All this. Addressing sun, rising sun. What does he do? He has two powers. One is a terrific power. Heat. Heat in it. It can consume the whole world. It can consume it in no time. But the same sun's rays is required for vegetation, for life. These two are inseparable, inseparable. In sun, sun's rays, you cannot divide it. And the Veda says, Rudra. Is Rudra, Gora, is Shiva, feminine. Yata Ishu Sivata Ma, that which is auspicious. Yata Ishu Sivata Ma, Sivam Bhavuva Te Dhanu, Thaya Atma Vishwata Paribhuja. What a beautiful poetry. Rising sun with two powers, inseparable. One is called Rudra, the other is called Vishnu. Agni and Rudra are identical. Rudra Vayesha Yad Agnihi Veda. So Agni and Rudra are the consuming powers, the brightening powers, life giving power, protective power is Vishnu, inseparable, absolutely inseparable. That is why. He said, when he rises up, how he rises up? He pushes down the darkness and comes up. Udvayam tamas avpari pasyanto o jyoti ruttamam. Looking at that jyoti, which pushes down the darkness that was there engulfing the whole night, 
It's a Kurma Purana. Purana has meaning, not meaningless, nonsense. They have very good philosophical meaning. But we emphasize only the story part, but not the philosophical part. Next one. <coughs> Next. Now we come to Murti, Bimba Murti. But we are so attached to it. We do so much of Archana, Abhisheka, Alankara, and Stotras. We are not able to separate that. And it is proper that we don't separate. But it is the mantra which is associated with this image. So, he, she is Gora. She is not Gora for me. She is Gora for my enemy, who will try to destroy me. That's why I put the eyes like that. There's, there is a difference in approach. Next one. This is from Orissa. Next. Now, in northern part of India, Everybody can go and touch the linga inside the Garbhagraha. In South, that's a different tradition. Doesn't matter. Whatever is the tradition you protect it, you put it in your mind, then you are, there you are, next one. The linga. Next. Another great linga. Ujjaini Mahakala. <coughs> The great Mahakal of Pujaini inside. In the morning, when they do the puja, they change after one Abhishekha, it becomes a Kora, southern facing, south facing. Next. And then after that, it is Shiva and Parvati, or Shiva. And Vishnu, same, same image, same with Jaini Mahakala. So we have to change our mind and tune our mind to understand this linga. That's why we say that this half an hour professor cannot be an authority for us. Next. And look at this. There is no structure, just an image made of stucco. Inside the forest, this is a temple. You are the people that say this is a temple. Mm. What temple? The whole forest is a temple. It is a it is a common man's temple. Next, there is another one. Next, take a kala bhairava or somebody like the image, sir. The way is that. We used to have such images very much in, uh, in the Kumbhakonam Tanjavur belt. I have seen such a lot of images. Is this a Grama Devata or... Uh... No, no, there is no such thing as Grama Devata or... We do, we apply this word. For example, we have in uh, Kanchipuram, hmm. we have the Urahalanda Perumal temple, Uraham temple. And the inscription says he is the Grama Devata of Kanchipuram. So he is the protector the protector of that village settlement, whatever be it. That is the grammar there. Next one. You should have given me more time. Next. <laughs> Next. <laughs> well, this is a Chidambaram. The inner consciousness and the outer consciousness. Man has two. And we have called, we have a, a great uh, Narayana Sutta. Antar Bahishchatat Sarvam Vyapya Narayana Stitaha. is inside and also outside. So these two structures, gold and that one, where Lord dances, Shiva dances. This is Ambalam, Chidambalam, Chidagasa, Chidambalam. And that is Perambalam. Kanaka, Kanaka, Sabha, next one. 
I see how the structure develops. This is an entrance in the Kerala. What beautiful temples you have Kerala. Kerala is the abode of pure temples, uncontaminated by modern all these executive officers and so on. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great temple at Kanchipuram. We go to Kanchipuram, we don't see only one temple and this is the temple. <laughs> And the builder says, I have caused this temple to be made, surpassing the beauty of sports Shiva performed in the Kailasa. Saide Kailasa Dilong Apaharati Grihe Raja Simmesharakhe Vibratya Brahmlihagri Virachayatu Sados Nidhanam Prashanka. It's 700. Go there, you see the whole unimaginable distribution of sculptures, of Shiva sports, Vishnu sports. There are no before our 10th, 12th century, this sectarian division. So you have Shiva, Vishnu, everything portrayed in sculpture. What is the name of the temple, sir? What is the name of the temple, sir? Kailasana. 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 Next. This is the great temple of Tanjore, built on the concept of Meru. I can't talk to you about Meru because Meru is the embodiment of Vidya, Sri Vidya. <coughs> Entrance tower. This is called Gopura. The other one, the tower over the sanctum is called Vimana. So there is a Vaishnava text, Vaikhana's Agama, which is called Marichi Samhita. <coughs> it speaks of Vimana Archa. What is Vimana Archa? It defines Murtam, Amurtam, Samurtam. What is Amurtam? Agna Uhutam, Amurtam. When you offer it in the Agni, it has no form. But when you prathima uh, archa samurtam this is better this temple image is better because even after the yajamana is no more there in the agni it goes off but it here it continues to and so vimana archana kalpa is much better so in the vimana which is above the sanctum in the center is the god Yes, sir. This is the one he built. Uh, and I'm a Jack <laughs> That is an inscription. Your village is mentioned there. Gangai Kunda Chodapur. 1020. 1020 built by Rajendra Chodapur. This has a form, square at the bottom, octagonal in the middle, and circular in the top, imitating a linga, stula linga. Next. Bradishwara was how many years before 1020? That is 1000 AD. Next. Next. This is called a Gopura. Bradishwara Pimana is basically uh, yeah, Sri Chakra's uh, expansion in, 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 the, in space. Is that what I have done? It is called Meru. It is called Meru. Next. <coughs> then you have the tank. You invoke Shiva Ganga. Next. Well, the subject is so fascinating. My friend is a little agitated because time is up. <laughs> and he so we have two questions. We spe before time runs out, we wanted to specifically to talk to your expertise on that. And if that's okay, can we ask them? No, we will we write have, afterwards. We have, time. we have time. They are all there. Let me give some more ideas and then we will discuss. We have time, sir. Huh? We have another 15 minutes. Yeah. There has been a shooting in Connecticut last Friday and so they are having a prayer meeting in this hall at uh, 10 minutes to 7. Okay. okay. That's, so that's, that's that, 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 that is finished. So, uh, no, please continue for another 10 minutes. I will point out. As I told you, I am time conscious. 
and uh, uh, you know <coughs> there is a called taal and apataal <laughs> if you go out of your time <laughs> i will point out <laughs> you know so uh, <laughs> whereas i was tuned to start at 5 o'clock and since i started at 5:30 this is became a little apataal that's why i have to cut it now you don't mind next one See, these are all mandapas. Mandapas are not mere structures; they are all gods. Next, look at this. Next, look at this. North India. So every region has; they have the every um, language. Over is or this or that or this. No, Bengali. language is to seppum moli padinettudayal enil chindanai ondudayo says bharati she has india has got 18 languages but her thought is one seppum moli padinettudayal enil chindanai ondudayo so we have different forms in different parts of india and also south east asia and the sculpture the philosophy underlying all this there is one unity absolutely one unity there is one pallava ruler there pala ruler there chola ruler there they were fighting but the law was dharma shastra <coughs> the king cannot create dharma shastra my mps cannot create law for themselves we had a very interesting episode in a indian parliament sir i will with that i will close it yeah. uh, there was one law when they wanted to act one the mps were getting 5000 rupees a month and other ones because here and there they have to go you know <coughs> for all other laws they take several days sometimes several years <laughs> So, so many. One law, they said, this five thousand, you know, price has gone up. This is too small. So every <coughs> MP should be given eighty thousand rupees a month as other ones. And without one second of discussion, the law was passed immediately <laughs> in Indian Parliament. So that is possible. <coughs> And uh, so, friends. I think I better stop it here yeah, because so that you. Know. <laughs> we, have, we have ten more minutes. We can have questions. We have more. Anyway, uh, now uh, there are so many other points I wanted to talk to you. Uh, we will have it on some other occasion. If I am still active, able to come here and uh, talk to you, uh, I will be able to uh, give more more information on it. Thank you very much. <laughs> generally it is defined in the dictionary as abode of god this is the definition what is the abode of god many people <laughs> ask me whether in the vedic time where there is a homa were there any temple and my my friends here american scholars should say no there was no temple <laughs> if temple is abode of god and i invoke the god in the stone image and it is the same thing that i do in the fire agni not one or two so for the person who performs homa this agni is a temple it is abode of so many devatas 
Indra, Varuna, Yama and so on. Then, the, the, the problem was, this image, some images were found, some Nataraja images were found. This was the temple structure, it was in ruins, somewhere there that the images were found. So the legal question was, how can you call that image found there as a property of this temple? This is the legal question. So, but before going to London for giving evidence, I went and made a excavation around. And behind this ruined temple, 20 meters away, there was the enclosure wall going, which was lying buried under the earth. So we could bring out the whole layout of the wall. And so where these were found were the uh, inside the prakara. So the prakara is though a plain place, is a consecrated space. In Nitya Puja, they do worship of this space. And you know, there is a big Bali Pita. Bali means not cutting the head or anything like that. <laughs> Bali means any offering made flour, water, cooked rice. It's called Bali. <clears throat> so what do we say there? Here is Vishnu or here is uh, Shiva or here is Devi. And there are all the subordinate Parivara Devatas. Avarana Devata, for all of them I do the puja. Then we have the Dig Devata, and outside the Dig Devata also, even immediately after the Prakara, there are Bhuta, Preta, Pasachas, and so on. To that also we pray, sometimes we have to satisfy this useless fellow so that he won't disturb us. <laughs> so we offer him puja, and then he comes to the center of the deity and says, God, I don't know how many more powers are there. How many more gods are there? These are not known to me. So for known and unknown devatas, I offer this balit. That is the main purpose of the Valipita in all the temples in front. So there are many powers we don't know. Tomorrow we may find some other power to go to the outer cellar, Venus, that power also need to be propitiated. So, all space in the temple, you cannot go and disturb the space around the temple, saying this is the one, nothing is there, why not I build a new, new structure, a dance hall or a lecture hall or some hall. You can't do it because these are called the marmasthanas. These are all pervaded by tremendous power. And even scientifically it is required because the central tower should have the strength of the space to retain it for thousands of years. So they do not want you to dig all the space. But we do. Um, Rusty will be elected this year, why not I build a kitchen here? Why should I go so far? So he will build a kitchen. And another man will build something else. These are not authorized. These cannot be dictated by the by the stapati who comes here. He cannot do that. You have to have an acharya to tell you where you have to do that. <coughs> so that space where those images were found, I said whether it is a structure, image, or enclosure, consecrated enclosure, or even absolutely nothing, space, or kasa, is temple. Chidambara Mataraja dances in Akasa. So he's about his space, nothing. So we have Akasa Linga, Jala Linga, Vayu Linga, so many Lingas. All these, whether consecrated or not, where we invoke. That is why your own body is the temple. 
ದೇಹವು ದೇವಾಲಯ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತು ಜೀವು ದೇವ ಸನಾತನ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಐ ಲೆಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮದ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುಚ್ಚತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣವಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವ ಅವತಿಷ್ಠತೆ ವಿ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ದೆನ್ ವೇರ್ ಡು ಯು ಸ್ಯಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಮೋಗ್ ದಿ ಕಾ ವೇರ್ ಡು ಯು ಇನ್ ಮೋಗ್ ದಿ ಕಾ ಯು ಸೇ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಇನ್ ಓಕೆ he is the support of this whole sarva aadharasya chaasanam he is the support of this whole universe suspended all over you say i am aadhanam samarpayami <laughs> he is such absolutely pure but you say snanam samarpayami <laughs> and then you say he is ನಿರ್ಲೇಪಸ್ಯ ಕುತೋ ಗಂಧೋ ವೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಫ್ರಾಗ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ನೋ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಸಂದನ ನಿರ್ಲೇಪಸ್ಯ ಕುತೋ ಗಂಧೋ ಅದ್ವಯಸ್ಯ ಕುತೋ ನತಿ ಯು ಸೇ ಅದ್ವಯ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಹೌ ಆರ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ವರ್ಷಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಅದ್ವಯಸ್ಯ ಕುತೋ ನತಿ the ancients have thought of it they have said it but still i am like a child i think you are the by offering me i purify my mind so that i will appreciate and become a paripurna that is why i do you i do that so i establish a contact between me and the image in front that is what the ancient have given us the idea so everything in the world <coughs> if you can only think of the leaves flowers trees everything the dried up tree after the atom still these are all these are all the divine manifestation according to our concept so as many beings there are we will call as many gods are there you need not be worried about only one god as many images are there as many living beings are there as many uh, trees and move your mobile and immobile things are there we invoke the power the supreme power and we call it god so worship of multiplicity and one god from whom all this come both are acceptable to us let these people don't come need not come and teach us what is god thank you very much